feature cam allows users to use curves as entry and exit paths for turning toolpaths. This allows us to guide a tool into and out of a toolpath, for instance when we need to avoid a tail stock. So I'm going to come to my part view and what we can see is we have one pre-created turn feature. So if we preview this operation, what we see is the tool rapid to the initial start point of the toolpath and then machines the part according to the strategy and attributes defined within the feature. Now if we run a 3D simulation what we can see is that the tool as it rapids to the initial start point of the toolpath gouges and machines away part of the tail stock. So we can get around this by creating a curve to be used as the entry for our toolpath. So I'm going to come to my snapping modes and turn on grid points. I'm then going to draw using connected lines some geometry to determine my start entry point. So once I've created my geometry, I'm then going to turn the geometry into a curve simply by picking the points and I'm going to give this a name such as start curve. I then have the ability to come into my turn feature and coming to the turning attributes under start point I'm able to select my curve. Now in Feature Cam 2014, I can do this interactively by selecting the curve on screen. If we now re-preview the toolpath, just using my Alt F3, I'm going to step the tool through the toolpath. We see an initial rapid move to the start of the curve I've defined. We then see the tool following the curve moving to the start point of the toolpath and machining the part like so, in this case avoiding the front end of the tailstock. If we run a centerline simulation we can clearly see the moves of the tool. So the tool follows that start curve that I've defined and then moves to the initial point of the toolpath machining the part. We can also validate this in the NC code. And what we see is our rapid move until the initial point of the toolpath, like so. Now we also have additional features within our strategy page which determine whether we rapid or feed over the curve. So if I come into the strategy page, and select the finishing operation coming to my feeds and speeds tab we can see we have an option to feed from start point or curve. So if I select this choosing the rapid on curve method what we see if we preview the toolpath is we rapid over the duration of the curve we then feed from the position at the end of the curve to the start point of our toolpath and this is denoted by the purple line and of course we feed and machine the part. Again this can be validated in the NC code. So let's just run through a quick simulation and have a look at this. So we see our rapid moves up to this point here and we then feed onto the toolpath and then machine the part. If I come back into the feeds and speeds section I also have another option which is to feed on the curve. If I select this and preview the toolpath what I see is that the tool rapids to the start point of the curve and then feeds from there on end. 
Again, this can be validated in the NC code. So we have our initial rapid move to the start point of our curve and we then feed subsequently until we've machined the part. So we can also use curves to determine the exit path from our toolpath. So once again I'm going to draw some geometry like so. And I'm going to create a curve from the geometry drawn. I'm going to call this curve end curve and once again I'm going to come into my turn feature, come to the turning attributes and I can select the curve created interactively like so. If I apply and then preview the entire toolpath can see the tool following the start curve defined, machining the part and then using my end curve as the exit path.